I want to share with you some ideas of this topic I've been lately working on, that it's about the new dimensions of fundamental rights in digital societies beyond the state and the role of constitutional judges and constitutional courts. But first, I would like to thank Professor Xavier Philippe for inviting me to this seminar at the uh, Paris 1 uh, Sorbonne University. Also, Ilan Presser and uh, Hugo Fresao, who are going to be here with us, and Newton Tavares. Let's, uh, in order to study this uh, situation, have a little bit of context. And I, I, cho I choose this uh, situation going on with the Brazilian justice and the situation of ex-former company Twitter concerning freedom of speech. And several questions arise. Some of them are about the scope of fundamental rights. Can you uh, stop them, limitate them by a rule like this or a decision, judicial decision? Let's remember that uh, the court ordered it, uh, X to expose some information about some uh, users of the platform and also to block some of the users. And this uh, take us to think the role of the state regarding constitutional rights. Should be the state guarantor of the power or subject and submitted to the constitution. This is important because if we consider constitution a limit of the power and the power and the government, it is totally different than being used that constitution and constitutional justice in order to um, control people and control society. Fundamental rights are limits of the power. And sometimes it is manipulated to justify constitutional justice as an instrument of power for social control and even ideological imposition. I'm from Venezuela and I'm well, I well know how constitutional justice is used in order to uh, exercise control of the government. That's what I mentioned in some uh, real close cases. So we then we ask, should we recover or rethink the nature and purpose of constitutional just just uh, judge and constitutional justice. This uh, obliges us, this is necessary to make some reference. One could be the Declaration of uh, 1789 or Anne Marbury versus Madison, and one important case of Germany uh, constitutional uh, justice, the Luth case. Let's talk about this a little bit. Let's remember that this declaration of 1789 have this article 16 that reads, any society in which no provision is made for guaranteeing rights or for the separation of powers has no constitution. It is really amazing to see how constitutional justice is used by the power itself, by the executive, not in order to separate power, but exercise a united power. And not only to guarantee any particular rights, but to implement some ideological views. Then we come, and it's important to, to refer to this uh, uh, constitutional law uh, uh, sentence uh, order about the judicial review. Before Marbury versus Madison, it was impossible to believe that the judiciary could control and review the legislative uh, uh, figures, the, the acts, the, the laws. So it is important to mention and to have in mind that constitutional review and judicial review is to control the exercise of power. Even and better much the um, executive power. Then I want to refer very especially to this case, a uh, very important to constitutional uh, judiciary and law, that is the 
loose case of Germany uh, constitutional law. More or less, what is about? Yes, it is about freedom of expression. It was, and I want to read a little bit of this, when it says, the court's review was limited to the question of whether the regional court has correctly taken into consideration the scope and significance of the fundamental right to freedom of expression when applying the general clause of the civil code and when balancing freedom of expression against the interest of Harlan and the film production companies. This was about this senator who was Luth, who he was uh, calling for a boycott for this uh, picture, who was from Holland, was uh, the director, who was a Nazi back then. So the freedom of expression has so important that even though it wasn't against the any official uh, office, but this uh, release of this uh, picture, so it prevailed, the, um, the freedom of speech. So constitutional spaces, we have to see in versus the spaces of digital phenomena. Right now, we don't see the spaces of the states only geographically. We'll see that we have another layer. This layer, uh, it is, it wraps the states and sovereignty of the states. So this universality of fundamental rights is really closer than before with the digital age because it goes beyond the idea of the states. The notion of sovereignty then has different layers. Like we have before, we have this uh, layer or this understood of the uh, sovereignty has a monarchy. Then we have it the sovereignty resides in the people, but then the people give this representation to their uh, the legislatives and the Congress or assemblies. And then how can we understand sovereignty in the digital age? Sovereignty in the digital age, of course, is going to be totally different. It is going to be personal. You can have your own laws. When you say personal laws, it's like the code is going to be the law. We'll see that later on. I always like to have this in mind. This is a map of a world map without America. This was uh, prepared by Paolo Dal Pozo Toscanelli before Christophilus Columbus came to America. So... This means that the map is a representation of the of the ground of the of the earth, but in this case, America wasn't there. And this takes us to this paper, to this book that is the map is not a territory. This was written by Alfred Korsivsky, and the idea here is that legislations and even constitutions are representations of control of the power in certain moments of certain societies. Right now, it changed it at all. It changes. It changed the idea of how can we understand the, the states, and of course, we can understand the digital uh, interactions. Also, referring to this uh, French guy, Alexis de Tocqueville, it is important in this important uh, book, Democracy in America. I would like to, to read a little bit about how he was thinking about the freedom of expression, freedom of speech, and its exercise, even in cases of abuse as a guarantee of democracy and freedom. He says, I don't see freedom of press in the same way what I consider patriotism or virtue, for example. I love it much more from consideration of the evils it prevents than for the good things that they, they does. And why we have this uh, opinion of this? Because we'll see in this particular case of ex-former uh, Twitter that it should prevail the freedom of speech 
versus this uh, misunderstood, uh, uh, let's say, misinformation uh, argue, because the state, the freedom itself, it gets hurt more than any particular cases. Let's have some idea for sovereignty in the area of universality of fundamental rights. And do you remember when we started this presentation? Well, it was about this case of Elon Musk resisting to comply to the judicial order because he thinks it is unconstitutional against these fundamental rights and undemocratic. So the case of freedom of expression and resistance of X, and more specifically, his CEO, Elon Musk, uh, give some consideration of how can we restrict the, the, the freedom of speech? Can we restrict it? Can any state take control of something that is digital and is beyond the idea of the state? Well, resisting on just laws is not something new. From Augustine de Ipo or Thomas Aquinas or Lon Fuller or John Finney, we'll see how the idea of unjust law are going to be resisted. And we're mentioning on just law, but also on, law, on, on just uh, case laws or decisions, judicial decisions. This takes us to these two particular reflections I want to talk about. One is the call Gustav Radbrush formula for this application of unjust law. And should we follow or not an unjust law? And this Gustav Radbridge, um formula was used by Robert Alexi to prepare his weight formula for weighting and balancing fundamental rights. Robert Alexi, of course, his formula and his uh, opinion and his uh, proposals are not going to be well received by certain groups, but at least it's something interesting to understand what happens when two or more fundamental rights collide each other and which one should prevail. In this case, if we apply this formula, I'm pretty sure we should probably talk about this formula in a different uh, uh, special case and seminar. This particular formula could give us the exit or the result that freedom of expression should prevail over others uh, presented by the, the, the judge. And this gets more, more, more complicated, more prepared when you see that uh, projects like Starlink, we're talking about connection beyond the states. How can we understand this freedom of expression, freedom of speech with connection, open connection, how Starlink is promoting also from Elon Musk or SpaceX, we're connecting beyond the idea of Earth and Earth jurisdiction. Remember that I told you that I like to think about different layers? Well, it is like an onion. We have a new dimension and we have different uh, layers of sovereignty, different layers of legislation and different layers of rights. And the fundamental rights are in a layer that covers it all. And that's why I hear it is not very hard to see how system theory and regulation, regulatory layers are being used, that idea in programming, in law, in, so, in social science, in economy, in philosophy, and epistemology, ontology, culture, and even linguistics. We have to understand this phenomenon of fundamental rights also from the idea of uh, the theory of system theory promoted by Ludwig von Bertalanzi. Homeostasis and entropia are things that we have to consider when we see when, when the, the fundamental rights could collide and which one should prevail. So we'll see that this dimension of fundamental rights are in a layer that probably, probably not, I'm pretty sure it is global because it's digital. 
So we have to think a new layer for the universality and even interplanetary of fundamental rights and constitutional justice, not only from the scope of a, of a particular state, but a global idea, a global idea that is digital idea, digital layer. Well, we'll see we have the same new phenomena and challenges. Law and the regulations. Who is the sovereign? Who is the lawmaker? The lawmaker is going to be all, right now the states, like we understand it right now, or we have a new lawmaker. I like to present uh, this idea that we have to, to overcome the culture of authority, even the authority of law, and replacing it with the culture of justification. When I was a couple of years ago, invited also by Professor uh, Xavier Philippe, I had the chance of knowing this professor, uh, David Vilchitz, who took this idea of Etienne Murekic, a uh, professor from South Africa, who developed this idea that we have to overcome culture of authority. And the digital society comes to prepare this uh, bridge for a new kind of rights, fundamental rights in the digital era. We have to promote the culture of transparency over the opacity of power. We have to promote the privacy and responsibility versus the intervention and surveillance by the states. The transparency is going to give us that level, that layer that is necessary to promote this the new dimension of fundamental rights. Also, I was asking again, who's the new maker, lawmaker? Who's beyond the legislation? When we say is code law, is really a code law? Is the code the new law? So we have to restudy, rethinking the sources of law. Sources of law that make us think about hyper-regulation, to fight hyper-regulation, inflation and regulatory devaluation. We have to think a non-legislative law concerning about concerning open uh, uh, standards, voluntary standards, smart law, programmable law, and legisprudence, free and voluntary standards. That's a new way to think the law and the legislation. Of course, or how I was saying, the fundamental rights are going to be in a top layer of regulations, workable regulatory system, and defined temporal validity laws. So are some ideas that I propose to develop this uh, fundamental rights new dimension. Also, let's talk about decentralized justice, like Kleros, or justice without the state. An inter a very interesting proposal from Bruce uh, Benson about how to consider new forms of uh, solving problems. This is a case that uh, this is a paper I'm working on from the Carta Magna of 2012-15 to interplanetary constitutional law and Martian constitutionalism. A good friend of us, Richard Albert, has been uh, announced to be appointed as a member of the Interplanetary Constitutional Consortium. And also we'll see uh, Mr. Musk here. And who are going to be the new lawmakers? Because they are preparing a draft for Mars. Not necessarily lawyers. We'll see how the, the professions are going to be directed to this. Now, closing uh, reflections about this. Let's remember, the map is not the territory. The territory is one thing, and the map is a representation. The constitution is a representation. Legislation is a representation. So the, the laws, the rights, the fundamental rights are on the top of it. So the legislation and the constitutional must protect fundamental rights. We must look at current territories, and those territories are digital right now, are not the same. Remember democracy in America? Well, I love it much more from consideration the evils it prevents than for the good things that it does.
considering freedom of speech. So probably we can talk about democracy on earth, like new Tocqueville 3.0. And well, where's the role of a constitutional judge in digital societies? It's not other than preserving fundamental rights. And fundamental rights are like this one from freedom of speech should prevail. And now that we're talking about robots, we need to leave the society for the kids, like my own, that have this idea of uh, robots and the robots are not the same like we used to think about. The robots are like this. Robots is intelligence. Robots are freedoms. And we needed to have this idea. Again, thanks for the opportunity to share these ideas I'm working on. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.